So this is the timeline of events of the Cold War from 1967 to 1993. Um, there's a lot of things that go on that are not on this timeline, but this is just a highlight, uh, kind of like a highlight we did with the Cold War presentation. There's a lot of other stuff going on. We just don't really have time to get into it. So this is between the U.S. and Soviet Union, other than some hot spots like Vietnam and Afghanistan. So you get the Six-Day War. As you see, Israel's U.S. back. They fight the Arab nations and their Soviet back. Israel wins in decisive fashion. This really kind of see, we kind of test some new technologies here and uh, see how it goes up against the Soviet technology. So 1971, Nixon's trip to China. Uh, we recognized China as a country and we continued Nixon's foreign policy of detente, which is a break from containment. Basically, we're going to we're going to recognize the large nations. We're going to deal with the power nations and regardless of uh, political um, political or regardless of the government of that nation. So we hope to get the Soviet Union to pursue diplomacy as well in 1971 and they will follow because he will visit. He will visit Russia soon after, which keep in mind, Nixon was a hard anti-communist. So. It made him really the kind of the right person to do this uh, because he didn't look to, uh, soft on communism. 1972, you have the SALT agreement is signed. This is just the Strategic Arms Limitations Treaty, and it limits nuclear weapons between the Soviet Union and the U.S. It limit production of the nuclear weapons. This is for mid-range nuclear weapons, though. This is not for the uh, ICBMs. Uh, continued to taunt period of less tension between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. 1975, Vietnam falls to communism. South Vietnam falls to communism. As you see, North Vietnam invades uh, South Vietnam, and South Vietnam is going to lose this thing. The U.S., we had lost over 58,000 men trying to keep South Vietnam from falling to communism, where in the end, it just fell to communism. Uh, we had left Vietnam in 1973, so... Uh, we had promised that if uh, North Vietnam invaded South Vietnam, we'd send our troops back in. However, President Ford in 1975 says, basically, we, we have been there and done that. And uh, he said, we can't move forward by reliving the past. So, um, 1980, big moment for the U.S. because our amateur hockey team, defeated the world's best hockey team and the most experienced hockey team, that would be the Soviet team uh, in the 1980 Olympics. Keep in mind, the Soviet team, would uh, they, they consistently beat the NHL All-Stars. So this was a huge upset for uh, America. And as you see, pride in the U.S., um, the Soviets had not been defeated in hockey, I believe, since 1960, since they had lost to the 1960 American hockey team. 1987, Reagan urges Gorbachev, new leader of the uh, Soviet Union, he came to power in 1985, and he is a Khrushchev, uh, a Khrushchev student. He is a moderate leader of the Soviet Union, and he would like to ease tensions with the U.S. Reagan urges Gorbachev to tear down the wall in Berlin. Gorbachev had started Perestroika and Glasnost, which was uh, permitting more involvement in the buffer states. What perestroika means is that economic and bureaucratic restructuring of the Soviet Union ended government censorship and allowed free elections. Glasnost is a Russian word for openness in discussing social problems. So when he allowed them to discuss social problems, they, they had problems. 1989, the Berlin Wall falls. East and West Berlin are free to move back and forth between one another. And this actually comes about as a fluke. Um, but there's a, there's a whole history behind how the Berlin Wall falls. And it was kind of a, a, a moment of weakness in uh, East Germany to allow this. It was actually at a press conference. And the, I think it was the Secretary of Defense or something for East Germany says something and it allowed the floodgates to open. Anyway, Eastern European countries began falling. 1993, really, 
the Soviet Union falls in 1991, but by 1993, you have the Soviet Union's dismantled. Boris Yeltsin is a democratically elected leader of Russia. Ethnic regions begin fighting for control, uh, once uh, fighting for control of once dominated areas. Keep in mind, like um, Yugoslavia. Uh, 